Hi, this is Todd with Land of Map. In this video, we're looking at scale factor. And we're going to focus on two main things. Number one, how do you find scale factor? And number two, how can you use it to find missing dimensions of similar objects? So similar objects, kind of like this one right here. This is, a similar, this is similar to a real 2002 Ford Thunderbird. Clearly you can see it's not the same one. But it looks similar, it looks like the real thing. And this one they scaled it like 1 25th of the real size. Now, in this video, I'm going to give quite a few examples of each one. So if you find out you're doing really good on a certain topic or you don't need something, feel free to skip ahead. Down in the description, I'll have a little timestamp. So if you want to hop ahead to certain spots, that's cool. So let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, first, finding the scale factor. Now you notice in this example we're using squares. The nice thing about squares, they're always um, similar to each other. So the one on the left is the original, the one on the right is our new square or our scaled object. And the way we find scale factor is we take the side on the right and we're going to divide it by the original side. So the new one divided by the original. Now we got to use the corresponding side. In this case you see we get a scale factor of 2. These next two squares also similar. And we're doing the same thing. We take the new or the scaled object, we divide it by the original. In this case, we get a 0.5. Anytime you're taking your objects and they are shrinking or getting smaller, you always have a scale factor of less than one. All right, so here are three more examples. So in this example, we have two triangles. They're similar objects. And to get the scale factor, it's the same thing. It's the new object or the scaled object divided by the original. And you can see when we do this, every single time we get the number 3. So our scale factor of this one is 3. Second example. Same thing here. We're just taking the new object divided by the original. You can see it's gotten smaller. And again, it has a scale factor of 0.5. Because every time we took the right side of the new object, we divided by the original. We always got a 0.5. And then here's the third example. Um, in this one right here another triangle and again, again you see it's getting smaller so we're probably going to have a scale factor of less than one and sure enough you see we're getting 0.1 and for it to be similar we should get the same every time we do so it's a scale factor of 0.1 now you could do the same thing with fractions and decimals so for example with fractions we could take our 7 24s divide by 7 16 if they're similar we should get the same number in case we do the first one is two thirds and if we take the other two sides and we divide them, we also get two-thirds. So there's your scale factor. And the final one of finding scale factor is with decimals. And it's the exact same process. The new or the scaled object divided by the original object is going to give you the same number every single time as long as it's um, similar objects. Now, if you get different numbers, then they wouldn't be similar. But in this case, you notice every single time we divide, we're getting 2.4. And so that's our we, that's how we know they're similar objects, and that's our scale factor, in this case, 2.4. All right, next we're going to find the missing sides of similar objects. So these two triangles right here are similar. And you can see on the right side, on the scaled side, we're missing two of the sides. So step one is to find our scale factor. And again, we're going to take the scaled object divided by the original, and we get two. Once we know the scale factor, we're going to multiply both of the sides of the original object by two. And then when we do this, we find out x, or the height here, was 16, and the y would equal 20. Now, we're going to look at a couple other examples here of the same thing. These are other similar objects. So in example one, we have two rectangles. And again, step one, what we're going to do is find the scale factor. So we're going to take the scaled object, divide by the original, and we do that, we get 3.5. That's our scale factor. Take that 3.5 and we're going to multiply it by 8. When we do that, we get 28. So the missing side was 28. Example 2. Same thing. Now you can see this one, the triangle on the right is smaller. So when we divide, we're going to get a scale factor of less than 1. So in this case, you see it's 0.5. So same thing though. We're going to take the 9, we're going to multiply it by the scale factor. We multiply it by 0.5, we get 4.5. And both those sides are going to be 4.5. Example 3. This is another one where you can see it's shrinking. So we're going to take the 5, divide by 20, 
and that will give us our scale factor of 0.25. Take the 4 times that scale factor, and in this case it's just 1. Just like we were talking about scale factor, you can do the same thing with fractions or decimals. So here's an example of fractions. We take the 3 eighths divided by 1 fourth, and when we do that, we're going to come up with 1 and 1 half, or you could say 3 over 2. That's our scale factor. Take that number times the 7 eighths, and you end up with our um, missing side, which in this case is 1 and 5 sixteenths. Same thing with the decimals. Take the new object or scaled object divided by the original. We get our scale factor, which in this case is going to be 1.25. And so you're just going to take that 1.25 times, in this case, 0.8. And when you do that, it happens to also equal 1. So that's our new object. Now, where it gets a little trickier is if we're trying to find a missing side on the left. Now, you can do the exact same thing. You take the new object or scaled object divided by the original. In this case, it's going to be a 0.25. But now what you're going to do is you're going to take the 4 and you're going to divide it by the scale factor. Now, dividing by a decimal is actually going to make the number bigger. So when we take 4 divided by 0.25, we get 16. So x in this case is 16. So here's a couple other examples. Again, same thing. Find that scale factor, and in this case it's going to be 5. And you can see that the side on the right is larger, so you have a number or a scale that's bigger than 1. So we're going to take that 35 divided by 5, and we get 7. Here's another one. This one's with fractions. So we're trying to find the side on the left. So again, find the scale factor. Take 7 twelfths divided by the 1 and 3 fourths. And when we do that, we're going to come up with a scale factor of one-third. So what I would do is take 7 24ths divided by one-third. That's our scale factor. And when we do that, we're going to end up with 21 24ths, or is simplified to 7 eighths. All right, a little hack that you can do if you don't like trying to find the missing side on the left is you can take these two objects and just kind of flip them. So I'm going to take my... Um, scaled object put on the left and the original on the right. So now I have the missing side on the right hand side. And so for some people this is a little bit easier. I would take the 40 divided by 8 and get 5, multiply the 5 by 5, and I would get my missing side of 25. It's important to understand that the 5 is not your scale factor. It's actually 1 fifth or 0 0.2. Same thing here. I got this object. We're trying to find the one on the left. I can just redraw these two rectangles flip the sides. So now when I divide the 1 and 3 fourths divide by 7 twelfths, I get 3, and just take that 3 times 7 24ths, which will give me 21 24ths or 7 eighths. And again, it's not the scale factor, but you can always just put a 1 over that number, and so you get the scale factor of 1 third. All right, our next situation is when we're trying to find multiple missing sides. So in this example, you can see that the objects on the left and on the right, both have missing sides. So on the left is x and y, and on the right is a and f. So what we're going to do, our, step, our first step, is to find our um, scale factor. So in this case, we're going to take 20 divided by 10, because they're corresponding sides, and we get 2. Every object on the left side, we're going to multiply by our scale factor. So the 4 is going to become 8, and you can see there's two of those. The 24 times 2 becomes 48. To find missing sides on the left, I'm going to divide by 2. So again, using that scale factor. So 12 divided by 2 is 6. And then to find the y, it would be 40 divided by 2, which should equal 20. Here's another example of the same thing. So you have these two objects that kind of look like a letter G. I'm going to take the two corresponding sides I find that have numbers, divide them, and I get 1.5. So that's our scale factor. Every number on the left side, I'm going to multiply by 1.5. Every number on the right side, I'm going to divide by 1.5. So when I start to do this, let's say I'm trying to find um, the side, left side here. So we're trying to find y. You can see I multiplied it by 1.5 and got 36. So 17 times the scale factor we equal 25.5. And so that's all you're doing. Anything on the left, again, multiply by the scale factor. And then we work the other way. When eventually we start working the other way here, we're going to take all these numbers 
and we're going to divide them by 1.5. So to find g, I would take 4.5, divide by 1.5, and that will give us 3. And you can see there's another g here, so both those are 3s. Take 13.5, divide by 1.5, and that will give you our scale, our, our missing side, which is 9. And so every single time, using the scale factor and just either multiplying it or dividing it will help us get our missing sides. And the last one, to find x, we find out equals 20. Well, thanks for watching the video. I hope it was helpful for you. Um, if it was, please consider giving it a like. And we would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot and best of luck with math.